trash can be something that without value. It can be something that annoys us or something we do not reflect on much at all. Or it could be a resource in order to close life cycles, a building block in a school construction, an asset in order to create an equal world. As engineering students with a passion for treating our planet and each other with respect, we're here to talk about how we use trash as a resource in order to create equality. Mm -hmm. Our history began in 2014 when we, with this vision about creating equality by using trash, founded our own NGO, Engineering for Mayan Students. In order to make this vision a reality, we spent a year fundraising and in February this year, we flew down to Guatemala to a small village called San Juan La Laguna in order to reconstruct, reconstruct a Mayan girls' school. Okay, so we're about to give you some rough numbers that describes the waste disposal situation in Guatemala. Yes, we are. So around two million tons of waste are produced in Guatemala every year. And 23% of this is plastic. However, only 20% is collected by the government, which is mostly disposed on landfills. And when walking around the streets in Guatemala, you can actually feel, or sometimes you can feel, a distinct smell of, pl of burnt plastic. And it is pretty obvious that most of the waste, maybe around 80%, is burnt in the backyard. So this leaves us with around 72,200 tons of plastic waste left in nature in Guatemala every year. So if you were about to convert this plastic trash to 0.5 liter bottles and pile them up, you would actually reach the moon. And not only once, but twice. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot of trash. But that's not the only struggle that is in Guatemala. Another huge issue is the oppression of the Mayan people, uh, who are still today suffering from a brutal genocide that they endured about 30 years ago. Today, about 79% of the Mayan people live in poverty, which is about 2.8 times more than the rest of the Guatemalan population. 54% of the Mayan people aged 15 to 19 has not completed primary school. Furthermore, only 50% of the indigenous girls are in school, and only one out of four of those girls stay in school, stays in school after age 16. Well, if we would compare this to boys, 70% of the indigenous boys are in school, and almost half of them stay in school after age 16. So with this kept in mind, is it possible to create equality by using trash? Yes, it is. And now you might be wondering how we can be so sure about this. Our conviction is based on the experience we had this year when we went to Guatemala in order to rebuild this Mayan girls' school. We didn't want to do this in an ordinary way. We thought, why produce more building materials when it's both expensive and environmental unfriendly, when there is loads of plastic waste just laying around in the Guatemala nature, which works perfectly as well as insulation. So that is why we decided to use a construction method which includes filling plastic bottles with plastic trash. And we needed to collect and fill thousands of bottles in order to finalize this school. And each bottle actually took around 40 minutes to fill with plastic trash. So as you can, can imagine, this was quite time consuming. Yeah. And because of this, we quickly realized this was not something that we could do on our own. So we got help from men and women in the village. And we also gathered around 50 volunteers that came from 
all across the world in order to help us. And having this many people with different cultures working together in a project created a really open-minded and creative environment. And how fun this was and how many great people we met is probably one of the strongest impressions that we brought home with us from Guatemala. Yeah, definitely. So those filled bottles that we had been collect doing, t collecting with the, with the volunteers, we later had to attach to chicken wire inside of the walls. And each bottle had to be tied on to the chicken wire individually. So this was quite time consuming, but not too complicated. So even the little brother in the family we stayed in could, could help us out with this kind of work because he was always really eager to help us out with the construction. And the last thing we did was to cover these bottles with cement. So when the school was finished after six months of construction, you couldn't even see that the school was built out of bottles. It looked like any other school, but as you all know, it's the inside that counts, right? <laughs> this project had so much greater impact on this small village than we would have thought. At the time um, for the construction, people in San Juan had started to realize how climate change is affecting them and how their nearby lake is becoming more and more polluted. And this made our project even more convenient. And by the end of this construction, this school was seen as a role model for the rest of the village because of their environmental work. Yeah, that is true. But we also have to admit that it was not that easy at first to gain respect as young female leaders at the construction site. The people in the village, they were definitely not used to seeing women executing this kind of work. But in the end of the project, we had both indigenous women and men helping us out with the construction, even though women did not participate to the same extent as men. But we still believe that this opened up for a discussion regarding gender expectations. OK, so if we move back to when we talked about how much trash that is left in the Guatemala nature each year. Uh, as, of course, as we're engineering students, we have to give you a brief calculation. So, um, this bottle stuffed with plastic waste weighs around half a kilo. And it contains about this much waste. <laughs> it's a lot, right. It contains so much more than you would think. And in order to build one of these bottle schools, you need around 5,000 of these bottles. And that corresponds to around two and a half tons of plastic waste. And as we mentioned earlier, there is about 72,000 tons of plastic trash left in the Guatemalan nature every year. And if we would use all of this trash in order to build bottle schools, we would be able to build almost 29,000 schools. Okay, so to make this clear, our point is not to build these many schools in, in Guatemala, but to illustrate the possibilities and to widen the perspective on how we can use trash as a resource. For example, in our case, using recycled plastic trash from nature brought many benefits, except for cleaning up the environment, it made the construction really cheap. Yes, and considering trash in this way is applicable in every parts of the world. Um, it's easy to think that problems with consuming habits is not affecting uh, developed countries. As we don't have trash laying around in the streets, it's more or less invisible for us. But as a matter of fact, here in Sweden, we produce about four times more trash per person than in Guatemala. So maybe you could try to remember this next time you're thinking about buying a takeaway coffee. Yeah, I will remember that. But <laughs> finally, we just want to add that in an ideal world, one would not be able to buy, uh, to, sorry, to build a, a school using trash from nature. But until we reach that point, 
this is just one of many examples of how you can use trash in order to create equality. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>